what I'm doing uh, is a new kind of theater. It's, uh, it's, uh, this theater is coming out of the tradition of happening actionism, actionism uh, fluxus, and, uh, and perform, uh, the performance tradition. And one part um, of my work is this kind of action painting you see here. We wanted to do something in which we help to establish Nietzsche, this part of Nietzsche's work, on its own. Um, you know, so this is this is essentially an exhibition of paintings, and sometimes the paintings get overshadowed because obviously the performances are the much more compelling. But we wanted to make a claim. I wanted to, as a curator, I wanted to make a claim for Nietzsche as a painter. The paintings are, in some ways relics of these larger action, action and performances. I have a particular interest in the ways in which contemporary art and religion intersect. So these very much, um, the, the, their shamanistic quality, the, the whole claims that are made for these uh, um, action and and, and, and for the paintings, in fact, which, which Nietzsche often refers to as relics. And relics are intermediate objects, you know, they mediate between the ordinary world, the prosaic world of every day, and this redemptive future. So it was very interesting to me that the, here was an artist who uses what you might call transgressive means, you know, is the, slaughter, the slaughter of animals, or the draping of the animals, for a very, towards a very utopian almost end, which is to free people from, to use Freudian language, repression, and to give them an experience of catharsis in which they are reborn, and in, in, that, in the process of that rebirth can freshly experience themselves in the world in a new light, one which is beautiful and tender and suffused with meaning and significance. So to me that was kind of interesting that, um, you know, there's this kind of uh, transgressive, one might say, or uh, um, uh, grim side to the proceedings. Um, you know, a lot of taboos are broken, a lot of, a lot of um, instincts, instinctual energies are released. But the project itself is a very utopian one. And also I love the idea that the paintings were relics. And it's interesting to me because blood relics really are amongst the most important relics in, Chris, in, in Europe, in Christian churches. And two in particular came to my mind. One is the Shroud of Turin, and the other is called the Sudarium, the sweat cloth, the cloth which, with which um, uh, St. Veronica wiped Jesus' face on the road to Calvary. And so many centuries of devotion and piety and sentiment have covered up the sort of the real bloodiness of those occasions. And I think in some sense these paintings sort of restore, as a, to, once again thinking of them as relics, the paintings restore us to the sort of bloody truth rather than the, the accretion of sentiment and piety that's accrued over the centuries. In my theater, everything happened in reality. There's no or actor who plays King Lear or, or Macbeth. No, he's himself. He's working with uh, with with colors, with paint, with uh, with blood, um, with meat, with intestines. Uh, um, this is very important that he feel himself very intensive that he wake up, that he is not in a lukewarm existence. Uh, I try to show intensity. And uh, all the, the audience shall be learn to feel our senses very, very intensive. 
obviously, yes, it will always be controversial, and there will always be some people for whom the larger utopian project is won't be accessible to them because they won't be able to get past the um, the, the means by which these things come about. When Nietzsche began to conceive of these performances, these akshonen, this was during a time where, when, uh, you know, a similar movement was happening in America. You know, there were happenings. There were people like Alan Capra, people like Jim Dine, even um, uh, the Fluxus group, Yoko Ono. You know, we're doing similar kinds of happenings, but they had more of a prankster quality. They, they didn't, they weren't a nihilistic practice, whereas in Europe it tended to be much more serious and much more bloody. And it made me wonder if, particularly in Germany and Austria, if people still weren't processing, still didn't need to have a means of catharsis to process their role or roles in, in the war. And I think it, it, whether it's, that's true or not, it struck me as a way of making more credible the claims for the cathartic nature of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the violence that's involved in making these, in doing these. Yeah. That there was, you know, that the Germans and the Viennese have a, a different relationship to the possibility of catharsis precisely because of their, they're still busy processing their roles in that war.